All right, class, settle down. Class is in session. Everyone get to your seats. Hey there, YouTube. I'm Yukitsu. This is the Yukitsu Times. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to Don't Starve. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about my favorite character, and that's Wendy. Um, so just going over her basic, basic stats really quickly here. Uh, Wendy loses sanity slower than other characters when she's in the dark and your monsters. Uh, she also... Hmm. She also uh, can summon Abigail, which is her dead twin sister. That remains relatively the same. Uh, they've changed it so that when you summon Abigail, she is just always around you. Um, that's what this little unique flower is. And when it's open like this and hovering, you can use it to summon Abigail. Otherwise, you have to wait. Uh, and lastly, her physical attacks are severely reduced to the point where I don't even think that they're really existent. They're just kind of non-existent things here. Um, if I recall, I could hit a bird with a boomerang and it won't kill it. So I'm not even going to bother with that. But uh, anyway, the general way that you use Wendy the first few days, as you can see I'm just nearing the approximate end of the scouting era, is uh, exactly the same as you would for pretty much anybody else. Uh, the only difference is that if you are somehow forced into a fight, you're not going to be able to do as well as you would with anybody else. Now, I'm going to show you how to use Abigail here, uh, because you don't start out with her. Ah, oh, shoot. Chester, did you scare away the rabbit? Okay, so. Uh, you need to provide a sacrifice, basically, to get Wendy to help you. Really? Okay, there we go. Now, the thing about the sacrifice is uh, you can't use the murder command. So what you can do is, uh, or first remember to drop down the flower. So don't use the right-click murder command. What you have to do is drop it on the ground and then uh, hit it with your axe. There we go. So that's Abigail. She'll go around and uh, do whatever it is that needs to get done. Uh, just be careful about her. So will sometimes bump into things like beefalo or what have you. Now, you don't need to summon her right away, because realistically you shouldn't be getting into any combat, and as you can see, that took out a big chunk of my sanity. Uh, so try not to summon her too often. Now, you have to summon Abigail every single time that she dies, but she, as you can see, she stays out during the day now, so you don't have to resummon her every day that you want her. Uh, you just have to make sure to summon her on whichever days happen to correspond with, you know, actual combat. So. Let's just uh, give you a bit of a demonstration here. So this is what she's sort of really good at, is killing these sort of little things like this. But she can take out a lot of spiders really quickly and really effectively. Okay, there we go. No more in there. So. All this really changes is the amount of combat that you can realistically get away with on your when you're still scouting. Uh, I still don't really think that there's much use in fighting anything while you're scouting necessarily. But uh, yeah, no, she's a pretty useful thing. You can use her to command her to attack things like uh, this rapid here with the control click. But uh, typically she won't actually catch up to them. As you can see, enemies flee from Abigail, so not really going to get much out of that. Again, you can go click the red bird over there, it'll fly away from Abigail. So, you have to use things that will, uh, you have to fight things that Abigail will actually uh, not chase away. So, considerations when you're sort of making a base with Wendy. Uh, she should be building a relatively standard base, just like uh, Wilson, Willow, or what have you, um, for the most part. I think to a certain extent, uh, you don't need to have as much... Uh, access to silk as those guys would simply because silk uh, in my opinion is mostly for sanity management um, those nicer hats are all about the sanity and so on and so forth so you don't need to worry about those as much so you can just get away with having a uh, being closer to the beefalo or what have you um, and once abigail's around uh, you can also get silk a lot easier than you can with other characters you just have to make sure that you know, Abigail is out and that she's not going to get killed in the process. You can actually tell how well Abigail is doing by looking at her facial expression. So if she looks like she's sort of down the dumps, back off. Um, 
regroup and go fight another day because if she gets killed, it's a real nuisance getting her back. Now, the thing about Abigail is a lot of people view her as sort of helpful early game but ridiculously obstructive later in the game. I don't particularly find that to be true. I find her to be fairly useful throughout the entire game, but I think it all sort of depends on what you're doing, how you're doing things. So if you're playing it like I am, where combat is something you should always be avoiding, um, Wendy it really works out well for that playstyle of mine here. So that that's why she's probably my favorite character. Anyway, uh, we're nearing the end of our exploration phase. I'll just get back to you in the morning to set up our base. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back. As you can see, it's morning and Abigail's gone. That's because we got attacked by a tree guard during the night. Um, Abigail managed to get killed, but we did still kill the tree guard. So I would call that a pretty good trade-off since I always have difficulty getting those stupid things. So uh, now that we've finished off that, so let's get back to base building, which is what we're going to be doing now. There's pretty decent. It's a pretty decent location here. It's near a road. It's relatively near the beefalo herds. So uh, I'm going to set up around here. Let me just uh, grab the stuff I need to make a base up, and everything should be relatively A-OK. -okay. okay, grab that, and uh, let's... Where's my gold, Chester? There we go. Okay. So, drop down our typical science machine, and uh, this is just the sort of base that you want to build with Wendy, and you're going to see it's very much the exact same sort of standard as it is for everybody else. Now, in terms of Wendy's utility, Outside of just your standard uh, not starving scenario, uh, the typical survival mode, I think that she'd be a relatively decent choice, but difficult to manage choice in adventure mode thanks to the strength of Abigail. Uh, the problem is that there are a lot of situations where there are just swarms of enemies in adventure mode, so those uh, those situations you're going to find that Wendy is not or Abigail is not all that helpful. Uh, she's just going to get killed far too quickly by whatever mobs it is you're fighting. And the opposite of that, I think, would be the caves. The caves, I tend to find, are usually low numbers of relatively dangerous mobs at a time. And the fact that she can just rapidly cause damage in her own little way, I think, is incredibly useful. So, I think that she would be a very good choice for uh, cave exploration, especially because her sanity degenerates slower. I, I think Willow, ultimately, is going to be a little bit stronger down there. But I think that she is also a pretty good one if you want to go cave cave exploring. The only exception is, of course, if you are down Abigail, she is going to have a very difficult time recovering from that. Now, uh, one of the things I'm going to try and check out more of is just how much that sanity difference really is. As you can see, my sanity is back up to full after just a little bit of inventing. Uh, so she recovers pretty quickly and it takes her a really long time to actually lose it. Uh, if you look at Abigail's flower, you get it back after she's killed. So try not to get killed near anything that is going to sort of camp that flower. Uh, examples of that would be if you put it near a bee projector, there's just going to be an unlimited number of stupid bees guarding it forever, and that's going to suck. Okay. Um, if you are forced to, you know, fight those sort of things, I would recommend running away until you're not near the hive, just in case Abigail gets killed. Because if she does, you're never getting that flower back. Unless you burn everything down, which, you know, maybe you should, given the circumstances. Um, forget entirely what I was going to be doing up here. But, you know, that's okay. Oh, right, uh, we we're going to go beefalo hunting. So, got our spear. Our qualifant. I always get those mixed up. Anyway, uh, we picked up a boomerang off a corpse, so we can always go do that with the boomerang. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it in time, so we're probably going to actually lose this one. Probably should have looked at the time before I started hunting this. Now, because your sanity doesn't drop quite as fast with Wendy, I don't really find that you have to spend um, as much on silk. So what I'm probably going to say is that you don't have to stay as near the... Um, spider nests, but what I'll also note is that, like, you saw me in the other guide, I didn't actually have to use that many hats uh, to get my sanity back up. I typically relied on things like, you know, a quick night in the tent, and that was more than enough to get me back up to sane. So, it's really your choice as to that. You can relocate spider nests anyway, so it's not a huge deal. 
just uh, basically do it with that however he feels necessary. You can always adjust it a little bit later. But uh, she is, all in all, I think pretty decent, but she's really unique, I think. And that might throw off newer players, so I would probably still play with using Wilson before I would play with uh, Wendy. Um, even Willow, I think, is a little bit closer to the standard. Just has a lot more little traps that can screw you over a little bit. Okay. And it will rotate this way to get back. There we go. Okay, so we're going to be uh, fighting this during the night. I'm going to quickly just chop down this tree here. And this is just to give you a bit of a reference on how much weaker Wendy's attack is. I think it's 0.75 or something of that sort, or something around that. Um, it is weak enough that I would highly recommend against actually fighting most things. Even spiders, I wouldn't really recommend kiting them, unless you absolutely have to. And this Qualifant is going to take absolutely forever. Uh, well, it's not it's not so bad because they don't fight back very effectively, but still it's gonna be annoying. Okay Okay Okay, so we're just gonna ow. We're just gonna play ring around the fire here and our ass is handed to us, Jesus. I keep getting stuck in Chester, that's what. Oh, I, I don't actually know why this is hitting me. But you know what? It, it happens sometimes, it's just like, you know, they get that random lucky hit even though you should have been fighting them. But, whatever. Yeah, fighting stuff as Wendy is horrible. Okay, there we go. Well, I took more hits than I honestly really should have. The thing is I wanted to kill it before night really set in. Um, killing things overnight is one of those annoying things that you have to do dancing around the fire like that. But, um, you know, it it's probably didn't seem that bad, but it makes a big difference when you're fighting things that really are dangerous to you, like uh, fighting a lot of hounds or if you're fighting bees or something like that. You can get really dangerous really quite quickly. Now Abigail's flower um, closes up. It should warn you when it's getting closer to uh, ready to use again. So once it's off cooldown, I recommend you just sort of use it again. It's no harm in doing it. So you might as well. But uh, all in all, when you don't have Abigail out and around, you're just a weaker version of Wilson. Uh, and you have to really be careful of that because if you're used to being able to get into a little bit of a fight with something, uh, you might not be able to do it with Wendy, or it might take longer. And time management in this game is so important, so critical that you've managed your time properly, that that could really hurt you if uh, you're not prepared for it. Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit more exploring, because uh, I'm, I'm thinking of ending the tutorial pretty soon. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything you need to know about Wendy. Um, as far as this character goes. I pretty much not recommend her for like brand new players, but if you've gotten a good feel for how Wilson works, she'll probably be a decent choice for you. Uh, one of the harder things is going to be, uh, of course, like winter. Things like McTusk or Deerclops or other boss monsters or e even that uh, tree guard that attacked me earlier. Those can all be fairly difficult in all honesty, so if you're not really well versed in defeating those sorts of things, it could really be a pain to try and pull yourself away from that and uh, survive. So, anyway, that's Wendy. Let's move on to the next character. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back. This is the second character for today, WX78, if I recall the number correctly. He's the next character on the list. Uh, just going quickly over his basic abilities. He's got a much smaller hunger, sanity, and health bar. Uh, but he can upgrade that by finding and using gears. Um, he gains special abilities when he's struck by lightning, which uh, I believe it reduces his sanity, increases his health, 
and gives him a speed boost, was I believe the combination. I could be backwards on the uh, insanity health thing. It's hard to keep track of that when it's happening to you. Um, in addition to that, he can eat spoiled food and goes insane in rain. So he's got a very long list of things that happens to him. Um, or sorry, he takes damage in rain. He takes health damage in rain. Everyone goes insane in rain. Um, as you can see, I've gotten some really nice boons on this run, uh, which has helped out a little bit. But for the most part, his adventuring is just a much, much more fragile version of everyone else's. Uh, even more so than Wolfgang. Uh, since your starting stamina, your starting health, and starting sanity are also low, all about 100, um, you're pretty much going to find yourself a bit worried about your resources uh, to begin with. Now. One of the things that you can do to alleviate this problem is find Maxwell's biome and kill the Clockwork Knights and Bishops to gain that health increase that you get from eating the gears. But that kind of reduces your ability to make refrigerators. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, since you can eat spoiled food without penalty, it's not necessarily as big a problem not having a refrigerator as it would be for other characters. Um, but for the most part, I would imagine that it's better to have at least one refrigerator. Uh, I usually actually build a lot of refrigerators in my bases, but that's just me. Um, as you can see, found the beefalo herds. I'm still looking for other resources that I potentially want to use for my finalized base. And um, what I really want to hope for with this scouting expedition is to find Maxwell's biome. The reason for that, of course, again, being that I, I can get those gears so I can show you that effect. Now, another important resource for him is going to be pigmen. Uh, compared to everyone else, the reason for that is that pigmen let you build the umbrella, which is a pig skin, and uh, I think it sticks or something trivial. But if you've got the umbrella, you can negate the rain damage that you take to your health from bad weather, which is something that comes up quite often in this game, in all honesty. So you don't want to be suffering through a whole ton of that damage. Now, as for WX78's niche in this game, uh, I think he's going to be that sort of advanced player character that, for somebody who's good at this game and wants to make it some to sort of uh, a late stage of it and be in a really solid, comfortable position without having to worry about anything. Because I believe he gets up to something like 300 stamina, 300 health, or something ridiculous like that. Uh, 400 sanity or something. So he, he gets absolutely silly at the end of the game. But he starts off weaker than everybody else. So if you aren't confident and you don't know what you're doing, uh, he's likely to just get killed right off the bat. So if you're a newer player or a beginner player, I can't honestly recommend WX78. But if you're feeling as though you're uh, getting a bit more competent at this game, if you feel like you want someone that starts off as a challenge, but you feel like you don't really want to lose your uh, hard work later on in the game, which is a big concern for a lot of people you know, with the, with the permanent death, WX is a pretty good choice, because once you've gotten to something like year 3 or 4, you'll definitely have found all the gears. You'll probably eat most of them, you'll have a huge amount of health, stamina, and all that other good stuff. So, uh, once you're in that position where you don't need to worry about anything anymore, uh, he's going to be a really great character. Uh, he's going to be a lot stronger than all the other ones. Of course, uh, having to carry around an umbrella all the time is going to be a bit of a pain, but that's not going to be a huge detriment to your character, honestly. And uh, one of the reasons that I think that he's going to not be useful for newer characters, especially the spoiled food extra ability, is that uh, spoiled food only really happens to more advanced players. If you're a newer player, you tend to eat what you get when you get it. And um, as you accumulate more and more food, uh, you tend to eat more and more food, so you always have a consistent amount. Whereas when you're an advanced player, uh, you're going to find that you've got a lot of food sitting around in your fridge that you don't really, strictly speaking, need. Uh, his ability to eat rotting food is really great for that, because that means you can wait till your food's just about rotten. You can throw it in the fridge, it's now jerky. Uh, you can wait till that jerky's almost rotten, you can cook that into a meaty stew. You can wait till that meaty stew's almost rotten. And, uh, I mean, by the time you actually eat it, you've probably gotten something like two more uh, coal offense in the process. But, I mean, it's a great way to salvage that sort of meat that would otherwise be in the red zone inedible for any other character of course if you are one of those more advanced players the question sort of is why do you really need that well it's because you want to sort of take it easy after you sort of struggle to establish yourself 
Um, in relation to other things, I think that he's going to be a strong character to use in the adventure mode. The reason for that being uh, there are a lot of clockwork opponents in adventure mode, and his ability to steal their parts to make himself stronger, tougher, and all that other good stuff is really going to help him out in some of the other levels and layers in that. Um, in particular, uh, if you've managed to get all of them, I think that getting King of Winter would be a lot more pleasant than it would otherwise be. So, the, the problem, of course, is if you start with a bad spawn and you aren't near any of those Clockwork anythings, uh, Clockwork Knights in particular, you're, it's probably going to end very poorly just because you start with such low stats. Uh, it's very easy to kill WX78 before he's gotten those upgrades. So, much like Wendy, prior to upgrading... Uh, I, I would highly recommend avoiding all forms of combat. Um, hmm. Okay, so my map is actually kind of strange. I don't really know where to go from here as far as exploring goes. But uh, anyway, I'll get back to you as soon as I start building my base, which has slightly different considerations, but for the most part, it's pretty similar to what I've shown you before. Hey, welcome back. I uh, haven't actually found uh, where I'm going to put down my base, and I haven't really finished scouting, but it started raining, so I thought I'd show you the sort of feature of his. As you can see, I'm slowly, slowly taking damage. Every two times that you spark like this, you'll take a point of damage. And uh, this can really sort of add up over time if you're not really careful, or if you haven't really established yourself, or haven't figured out a way to recover from that damage that you're taking. So, it's always going to be... A bit of an issue trying to keep yourself healthy as WX, especially early on during this uh, exploration part. As you can see, I've just been struck by lightning though. So uh, my sanity's gone way down, it's down to 64, but uh, my health recovered at the very least. Um, and I, as you can see, I'm moving really quite fast. And this is going to last for quite some time. Uh, how do I get over here? Just trying to explore as much as I can, which is gonna be nice with the system overload, but less nice with the uh, damage I'm constantly taking here. Anyway, uh, that's a look at this particular ability set for him. It's a bit of a mixed blessing, honestly. As you can see, I haven't taken so much damage, but it's still something that you have to worry about, in my opinion. Uh, so, bits good, bit bad. As you can see, the speed boost is really nice for uh, exploring the map. Uh, we'll get back to you in a few minutes. Okay, so I just wanted to cut something. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I've still got this buff up. It lasts for a very long time, which makes it very handy. And it makes you glow in the dark, so you can sort of see where you're going at night. You don't need a torch for a little while while you're adventuring. You'll have to have them ready, though, because it won't last forever and it might run out at night. Um, but one of the things I've uh, run into is Maxwell's Biome, as you can see here, uh, near a whole bunch of killer bee dispensers, which is both good and bad because I hate killer bees. But on the other hand, um, it lets me use the killer bees to attack Maxwell's uh, guardian guys there. So. What I'm going to be able to do come morning is uh, just get some armor on, get my spear that I found by uh, by the, um, I forget what thing has the uh, spear, but crank thing, I think, uh, that I got by the crank thing, and uh, use that to sort of finish off whatever the bees don't kill. So bees are incredibly good against these guys. They only attack single targets at a time. Uh, they do fairly decent single target damage, but those killer bees will shred through them no problem. Uh, we're at pretty much full everything except our sanity starting to dip down again a little bit. Very hard to keep your sanity topped off as WX. Um, just want to keep an eye out for that, especially because uh, it, it's harder to recover, I find, when you're a character like this, just because you can't take the risks to get that uh, silk. And that's the most reliable way to regain sanity, in my opinion. Now, we're very far away from where I plan to have my base come morning. And uh, yeah, we did manage to get the whole day without this. I wasn't sure it was going to quite last, but... Uh... Ah, here it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is eat that berry, and I'm going to eat one of these gears. And as you can see, I've gained uh, 20 more health, uh, about 20 more stamina, or... I think it was 20 more sanity or maybe a little bit more, and I think that's 20 more hunger, but I'm not positive. Let's just eat that. Oh, no. It's only 7 more hunger. Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put this on. We're going to run up here, try and lure this guy. And uh, we're going to head over to the killer bees. Hmm. 
Now, as you can see, the killer bees have started attacking the uh, mechanical horse, or the knight, as it were. And uh, they'll make fairly short work of him. And just watch him over there. And they are also attacking the uh, clockwork bishop now, so... Now that they're all attacking those things, we can just let them uh, go their merry way and uh, get rid of all those guys. I'm going to eat this other gear because uh, there's going to be plenty of gears. So as you can see, I'm now pretty much uh, above average in a lot of respects. So WX gets pretty good when he's doing this, but you actually do need more than one world's worth of gears. So, you know, don't rest on your laurels too much. Okay, so. Hmm. Well, in any event, let's just grab these up. There's some honey that's been dropped here, too. Nice. Okay, so. Let's get these killer bees after us. Let's wake up this mechanical knight. There we go. Got them all aggroed on those two, so they'll get finished off by those bees, hopefully. And uh, that'll be a very productive start for us. Very, very productive indeed. Now, finding this is a higher -er priority for WX than it is for everybody else. Oops, balls. But it's not necessary. You can do this later than I have. I just got uh, a little bit lucky. A good giveaway is actually these uh, killer bees. I tend to find that the Maxwell's biome is somewhere around killer bees. That isn't always true, but... As you can see, it was the case here. I'll have to check to see if that is a, an always case. Okay, so we'll keep this place in mind for later when we want the marble, but I do believe that I've gotten every single one of them. Yeah, I've gotten all the gears that'll be in this world very likely. So let's just go grab our backpack. And uh, let's keep this honey so that we clear up that inventory space. Ah, screw it. Freaking hate killer bees. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. Okay, so we've got eight gears. I believe it takes 15 in total for you to max out your statistics, but uh, let's get clear of these bees. Let's go find our base, and we'll have ourselves a nice meal of gears. Uh, now, one of the things I should have mentioned about getting struck by lightning, um, because that happened earlier, was I found Chester when I was hit by lightning. If you've got that lightning buff up, you will outrun the ever-loving heck out of Chester. He is way the heck over here, because I got too far away from him. Uh, and that's going to be fine, just as long as he's not carrying anything too important. Mobs don't seem to attack him when he's out of their line of sight, so you don't have to worry about that uh, little Chester of yours getting killed. Alright, more bee, bee projectors. Uh, yeah, if anyone knows if these things are 100% associated with Maxwell's biome, it'd be, it'd be nice to know for sure, but I get the feeling that they're usually pretty close to Maxwell's biome. Okay. Oh, there's uh, Maxwell's Gate, too. So you could go to Adventure Mode from here as well. Okay. Now then, I'm just going to head down to the uh, location where I feel like building a base would be a uh, smart idea. I've not found the Pig King, but uh, in all honesty, I don't really feel I'm going to need it for this uh, tutorial thingy here. Uh, I'm not going to be going too late into this character. Oh my, there are a lot of spiders here. Anyhow, as you can see, uh, our exploration was basically the same as it was for everyone else. There's always that sort of risk that I would uh, get killed by something much more quickly and much more easily. Uh, and I'm also out of food a lot faster. That was because of that little stint hanging around where there wasn't really much to eat. But I've got inventory space for berries or something now, so it's not like I'm actually worried. Uh, and worst comes to worst, we have got some seeds to eat, so. You always have that option. 
Um, if I recall, the beefalo herds were up here. Just trying to figure out where I wanted to set my camp up. I had somewhere in mind, but there were, there were very few good places. This is one of those cases where I, I decided that I couldn't actually build my base right beside the beefalo herds like I normally would want to. And I think I was planning on building the base here. So that, that's fairly close by. Um, now that I've actually found the gears, though, the reason that I wanted to do that's been somewhat negated. The reason I wanted to build it more there was because I wanted to build it closer to where I can sort of keep an eye on my exploration paths. Uh, it, technically speaking, it's a fairly bad place for a base because, uh, like, there there is a depletable resource here in these rocks. Um, the sinkholes down here I don't believe to be that useful or important. Uh, the beefalo herd is fairly far away through this biome. Um, the big advantage that I'm going to have through here is I can just farm tall birds and they're an excellent source of meat. So I am probably going to do that. Uh, it'll just be something a little bit different from what you're probably used to seeing me do. But in a lot of situations, you know, it's a good thing to be able to know how to do, I think. Okay, so we're going to build ourselves our fire pit and uh, pretty much everything that we always build here. Okay, don't have quite enough wood. And uh, do I have an axe? Yes, I do. Uh, the other reason was that this isn't too far away from the pig effigy, so it would make it easier, or the uh, reincarnation point. I forgot what they're actually called, but uh, the point where I'd be able to reincarnate myself if I died, that has pig heads. And that's an excellent place to go if you uh, want a few pig skins for whatever reason. There we go. Let's get some... Eh, let's not worry about that right now. Anyhow, for WX, the base is pretty much going to be the same. Uh, the only consideration is you need to make sure that's in a safer place than it would normally be because your hit points are normally going to be lower than it is if you're someone else. So I'm going to actually go ahead and eat uh, all but one of these gears. Okay, so as you can see, my sanity is now maxed at 220 my hunger at 160, and my health at 280. So those gears give you a very significant boost to all your statistics as WX. Um, and when they're maxed out, you're probably going to be the best, strong, you're going to be the strongest character in the game. Um, I, if you're going to do something like going underground or fighting a lot of tall birds like I'm planning on doing, uh, you're probably going to want to eat most of them. But, uh, you know, do whatever it is that you think is going to be best with this, those things. Uh, they're pretty rare. There are only a very small number in each world, so use them sparingly. And uh, if you're going to do it, make absolute certain that you save one for a refrigerator. You always want at least one refrigerator. And if you're going to do that, don't do what I did in that walkthrough uh, where I accidentally put the uh, refrigerator in the wrong section uh, so that it wasn't adjacent to the crockpot because it's very annoying having to walk back and forth between them. Okay, so now that we've gotten all that, uh, we're just going to clear away some, tree some trees here, uh, same as always. Get ready to get our farms up and running. Now we have got enough manure for two of our farms, but we are of course going to want more. I've actually got a shovel, what am I doing here? I've actually got two shovels, what am I doing here? Uh, oh well. Okay, so I'm going to put that in Chester so I don't accidentally eat it. Because um, it is possible to accidentally eat it if you're trying to click it on a chest or something. Okay, so this will get us all that wood. Now... One of the things about him that I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure is uh, true, is that uh, he maintains these additional statistics when he goes into the cave system. And I can go check that out for you all pretty much as soon as I've gotten uh, this all set up here. Where were the caves from my spawn here? Uh, they were just down there. So we're going to go run down there today and go check that out. 
Um, I do recall that you're supposed to keep your statistics upgraded when you go down there. Um, so this makes WX, if that's true, useful for the caves just because he'll be down there and he'll have a lot more uh, stamina and sanity, which are both somewhat trouble, uh, troublesome statistics when you're underground. And there's the benefit that it doesn't rain, which is, of course, something you don't want to have happen when you're uh, WX. Okay. Let's go down in here. Yep, as you can see, all of my statistics are still upgraded as though I had just, uh, as though I uh, had never left the surface, as though I'd eaten all those gears. So uh, this makes WX a pretty decent character uh, for going underground, so long as you've got, um, got some gears, so long as you found Maxwell's biome and you've eaten a lot of gears. Um, I am pretty sure that that does not carry over if you go into adventure mode. Uh, so I'm going to go double check that for you as well. So as soon as I get to the portal, because um, from here, the base is going to be exactly the same. Okay, and we're back. As you can see, we've made it to Maxwell's door. Let's head on in here. And let's see if we've got our enhanced statistics from eating those gears. Now, generally, I don't really play very much adventure mode, uh, in all honesty. I think there are a few kinks in it that just sort of make it less fun to play than it could be. But uh, if you're... Uh, yeah, uh, this one's really bad for WX because it's constantly raining. Okay, anyway... Let's take a look, and yeah, I was correct. You do not start with the enhanced statistics when you uh, are playing as WX. So that means that uh, if you start in adventure mode, you start off basically basically naked. Uh, your statistics are all going to be dirt low, and it's going to be very difficult for you until you've managed to acquire those gears. As you can see, cold reception, it's raining already. And that's pretty much how cold reception goes. It just rains constantly. Uh, so health, sanity, and hunger are all going to be major issues for you if you're in adventure mode with WX. And uh, you can't really rely on having the gears in time to make that, uh, sort of alleviate that problem. So, uh, can't really recommend him for adventure mode unless you already sort of know how to do it. Uh, and it also depends on whether or not you get a map that has uh, the clockwork knights guarding one of the bridges. So, that's about all I really have to say about WX78. Next up in our little guide to the characters is going to be, if I recall, Wickerbottom. And lastly, the new character, Woody. So, look forward to those. I hope you found this informative, and I hope to see you all next time.